What's up guys, I'm Ethan Carter and today I'm going to show you how I made this modern mantle clock for the Rockler Bentwood Challenge. Let's get to it. For this clock, I started by focusing on the kerf bent wood stand that would actually hold the clock up. I started by using my table saw and fence to cut a 2 inch wide strip of half inch plywood. I then made a mark in the center of the board and measured a half inch on either side. This will allow us to have enough room to mount the brass rod at the end. For the curve cuts, I found that leaving the top two plies worked out perfectly. Now there are plenty of websites that will give you the exact depth and width of the curves needed to achieve a particular bend, but for this project, the only thing that's really important is consistency. So to achieve this, I made a mark on my sled and used that as a reference point to line up the back side of the previous curve. As you can see, this little trick really helped to cut repeatable curves efficiently. I started from the right center mark I made earlier, and then worked my way all the way to the end before flipping the board around and doing the same thing from the left mark, making sure to leave approximately an inch of material in the center. Now I'm not sure how critical the next step is, but I thought it might be a good idea to gradually get the wood used to the bend, so I simply used a bucket and some clamps to bend the wood around the rim. I also used a shirt steamer to help make the wood pliable as I was clamping it. While that was drying, I moved on to making the actual form I would use to bend the stand around during the glue up. For the form, I needed a total thickness of at least 2 inches, but since my local big box store only had half inch thick MDF, I ended up needing to cut 4 matching circles. To do this, I used my router and circle jig, and I rested the MDF on top of some insulation to protect the blade from hitting the ground. To glue the 4 circles together, I used the trick of combining wood glue for strength and super glue for a quick bond. All four circles also had a hole in the center from the jig, which I used with a nail to help align them. I also used some weights, which I'm clearly not using for anything else, to apply some additional clamping pressure. To prevent the epoxy and wood from sticking to the form during glue up, I wrapped the edges of the form with some packaging tape. After about a day, I removed the stand from the bucket and did some dry fit tests around the form to make sure it would work before adding the epoxy. To clamp the stand around the form, I decided to simply use a tie-down strap, and I was pleased with how well this actually worked. Once I was confident the glue-up would work, I moved on to adding some epoxy in between all the curves to help the stand hold its shape. For this project, I'm just using some generic epoxy you'd find at a big box store. My goal was to actually showcase the curves as part of the design, so I went with a dark gray epoxy to contrast the light plywood. The epoxy ended up working great, but I won't lie, working it into all those curves was a bit tedious, and I'm sure there's a better way to do this out there. I also didn't know how much working time I would have with the epoxy, so I decided to apply it in two steps. As you can see, the epoxy did a great job of holding its shape, but it did create quite a mess. So to clean it up, I whipped out the disc sander for the edges and the oscillating sander to clean up the inside curve. If this is your first time to my channel, thanks for checking it out. And if you're enjoying this video, please consider hitting that subscribe and bell button. It really helps me out. I also post a lot of behind the scenes and smaller scale projects as Ethan Carter Designs on Instagram, and would love to have you follow me there as well. Thanks, and no pressure. After I sanded the bulk off, I came back with my random orbit sander to clean everything up, making sure to be careful not to sand through the top two plies. I wanted the clock to have the appearance that it was coming out of the table or mantle, so to do that I measured a straight line part way up the circle on both sides and then used my miter saw to cut the stand at just the right angle. This also created more surface area where the stand will sit on the mantle and make it a bit sturdier. And with that, the stand is basically done. The next step is to create the piece of wood that will actually hang from the stand and hold the clock mechanism. For this I'm using a piece of sepalee I had left over from a previous project, and I just used a container with the approximate circumference I was looking for to draw the circle. Next I decided to drill the hole for the brass rod before cutting the circle since it's easier to drill onto a flat surface. Now I probably could have used the circle jig again, but since it doesn't need to be perfect, I just used my jigsaw to get rid of the bulk of the material, and then I crept up on the circle line with the disc sander. Once I got the shape to look perfect, at least to the naked eye, I moved on to drilling the hole for the clock arm to poke through. 
What I didn't realize in advance was that the piece of sepalia I was using was actually too thick for the clock mechanism I was using. So I quickly pivoted and routed out a recess on the back side to allow more of the clock arm to come through on the front. I wanted to mount the brass rod in the top middle of the stand, which would be one inch from the edge. So I found a piece of scrap plywood that would bring the hole on the sepali exactly one inch high so I could attach the rod to both pieces at the same time, laying the stand on its back. I really like the look of brushed brass, so I used my Dremel with a few different polishing pads to give it a nice brushed look. And with all the components completed, I moved on to adding some finish. I used a tack cloth to remove any remaining dust before applying two coats of Maker Brand Simple Finish. To attach the brass rod to both pieces, I scuffed up the ends of the brass, and then I simply used some 5-minute epoxy, and then made sure everything was aligned. Once the epoxy cured, all that was left was to mount the clock mechanism and the hands. To do that, I just followed the instructions that came with the parts, and I was surprised at how easy it was to put together. And with that, the clock was done. I really hope you enjoyed this build and video, and thanks again for watching.